Mark, you alright? Yeah, I have a lot of pain in my shins. And there's a lot of burning sensations and even numbness here. Oh, it's so hard to run. Yeah, we have had a pretty heavy training schedule. Yeah. Let's get you in the clinic and see. Come in. Come in. Boris, have a seat. Thank you. So what seems to be the problem here? Uh, well, I get a lot of pain and uh, burning sensations and even numbness in front of my shin when I, while I'm running. Okay. And uh, the pain gets worse as I'm running. And it gets, to the point, it's get, it gets to the point when I can't run anymore. Okay. After about how long when you're running? Uh, I'd say after 10 minutes. It gets, 10 minutes uh, or so? It's pretty painful. Okay. And... Does the pain get worse when you stop running, or does it subside after? It subsides after. Okay. It gets, uh, I don't have any pain after about 10 minutes okay. after I stop. All right. And how long has this been going on? It's been about a year. About a year? Okay. Both sides? Yes. Okay. Should I hop up on the bed? Any pain or tenderness along the shift? I'm going to send you for some x-rays and a bone scan, and then I'll meet you back here when you're done, okay? Perfect. Thank you. All right. All right. So we got your results back. They look good to me. Came out negative. Nice. So there's no evidence of a stress fracture um, or any breakage or anything like that. So let's get you on the treadmill so we can do another test. Perfect. Okay, Boris, I want you to run until it starts to hurt, and then I'll get you to hop off the treadmill, and we'll, we'll check your intercompartmental pressure after. Oh, Alright, turn it off. That's what I thought. Pressure reading is about 30 millimeters of mercury. I think you have chronic exertional compartment syndrome. Oh, no. The lower leg contains four compartments anterior, lateral, posterior, and deep posterior. During exercise, the muscles within the compartments will swell. In chronic insertional compartment syndrome, the fascia prevents the muscles from expanding. This puts pressure on the surrounding nerves and blood vessels, causing the pain you've been experiencing for the past little while. Interns! What are some possible treatment options for this patient? Gary! Amputation? Uh, no, but that's close. What about you, Jay? Uh, fasciotomy. Yeah, that's more like it. Tell me more. Paul? All right. Douglas, what else? Biomechanical correction, reduction in training, rest, and ice. Also known as conservative treatment. Excellent work, minions. So now that we've discussed the treatment options, I'm going to recommend that you do some conservative treatment first, and then if that doesn't work, um, we'll think about doing surgery. Okay? Sounds good. So I'm going to refer you to my favorite physio. All right, board. So the treatment, uh, so the conservative treatment for this anterior compartment uh, syndrome is going to be a, initially a reduction in exercise of deep tissue. Uh, so we've already talked about the reduction in uh, in exercise for you. Um, so to start, we'll just get you up on the table here in a second, and uh, we'll do some, some deep tissue work on that. All right, Boris, so we're going to start with some deep tissue massage here on the, on the front compartment there. So to start with, we're just going to do some passive dorsiflexion, meaning that I'll be moving your ankle, and I'll be massaging this, uh, this compartment here, okay? So as I move forward, just like so. All right. 
couple more of those. So next, so you'll be dorsiflexing your, your foot or pulling your toe towards your head and I'll be massaging the front again, okay? So go ahead. Okay, and again. Awesome. So the next stage in the conservative treatment is going to be doing a biomechanical assessment. So Boris, what I'll get you to do is just walk um, to the door and back and we'll just have a look at your gait pattern right now. Go ahead. And back. Alright. So what I can tell from your gait pattern there is um, you're excessively pronating your feet. This is one of the predisposing factors to an anterior compartment syndrome. So what this means is that when you walk, um, you're primarily hitting the, the inside of your, uh, the bottom of your foot, rather than on the outside. So we're going to try to correct this pattern, but I'll get you, as you walk, to try to put the weight through the outside of the bottom of your foot, rather than the, um, the, I guess the medial or the, um, the inside of your foot. Okay. Alright Boris, so we'll get you walking here again. So let's really try to emphasize um, walking on the outside or on the, the lateral portion of your feet, rather than um, the, the pronated feet that you had before when you were moving. Go ahead. Much better. So the next thing we're going to do here, Boris, is we're going to analyze your, your gait pattern as you're running. So I'll get you to just a nice slow jog to the door and back, and we'll have a look. Go ahead. So what I noticed there was that uh, when you, as you're running, you're primarily heel strike running. Now that's going to be another predisposing factor for this anterior compartment syndrome. So what, what I'll get you to do is, is really try to emphasize a, uh, a forefoot run or um, running on the balls of your feet. So instead of hitting the heel every time, just try landing on, on your midfoot as you run. So let's, let's see that again. So run from the one back. to perform a fasciotomy on the lower leg. It involves cutting open the skin and making small incisions at the proximal and the distal end of the fascia. Let me go over the risks associated with fasciotomy before I perform the surgery. Complications such as infection, chronic pain, paresthesia, edema, osteomyelitis and amputation have been associated with fasciotomy treatments due to muscle exposure to the outside environment. Endoscopic methods have led to lower incidence of negative outcomes associated with the surgery than traditional open <laughs> fasciotomy. Surgical errors such as inadequate release, neurovascular injury, and muscular injury or disruption generally lead to poor recovery outcomes. But don't worry, I read the manual. Surgery time! Scalpel, please, nurse. Hi, Boris. I'm Jack. Nice to meet you. I'm a physiotherapist. Uh, how did your surgery go? Uh, I think uh, it went well. My, my surgery was kind of weird. I had a fake German accent, but uh, it was pretty good, I think. Okay, Boris, so the first one we're going to do here is going to do uh, toes up. Good. Toes down. Good. And now uh, circles. Good. 